All right. I'm really excited for our next guest uh, on the Bulletproof Dental Practice podcast. It's, uh, it's, his name is Bjorn. Bjorn, make sure I pronounce your last name correctly. Bjorn Wolterman, correct? Yes, Wolterman. Look, yes. But Wolterman. There we go. Yes. There you, and he is the CEO of Catalyst. And I am really excited to, uh, to introduce everyone on the Bulletproof Dental Practice podcast to this technology. So essentially, it's a revolutionary way to work out in 20 minutes through EMS, right? So through an EMS is electro myo uh, stimulation, right, Bjorn? Exactly. Yes. Good, good. Um, and I was introduced to this technology via the, the um, Ben Greenfield podcast. I remember he did something and you were on it as well. And um, Ben being a big biohacker and me trying to be a pseudo biohacker, I was like, man, I need to check this thing out. Check this thing out. And so I, ben, ben was actually on the uh, Bulletproof podcast as well. Um, but anyway, so we're going to discuss basically what the catalyst is. But I think some more important questions that we're, I'm going to talk about right now to give some context is, why the heck are we talking about fitness equipment on a dental podcast, right? We're usually, Bjorn, we usually talk about the systems and the marketing of business and entrepreneurial dentists. This is an entrepreneurial dental podcast. So I'm going to go into why I think this is important because it's because I have one and it's, it's really changed my life, this catalyst suit that we're going to talk about. Um, but A, I think dentist, I know everyone feels like they're pressed for time, Bjorn. But I feel like dentists really are pressed for time, meaning that we have a set schedule. There's patient care that defines our, our available bandwidth of time. And then after that, we have hours where we have to do admin. So dentistry is usually half of what we do. And then the admin is usually kind of, you know, 25 to 50 percent more of additional what we do. So we are more pressed for time as humans. Therefore, our fitness kind of goes to the wayside a little bit. Right. So we are more pressed for time. Um, also. The second point I have is that we are in these repetitive positions throughout most of our career, right? Our shoulders are up like this, like chicken winged. Our back is bent over. We are in poor ergonomic positions um, for most of our career, right? Day after day, eight hours a day in, in poor ergonomic conditions. As much as they train us to do uh, proper ergonomics in dental school, it's just, you know, it's shit. As soon as the professor leaves, you're bent over the chair, you're in the person's mouth, your back's all contorted, and you're, and you're sitting there like this for eight hours. The third thing is, is that pain. Um, a lot of dentists I know have pain associated with what they do, mainly predicated from the second example I just gave is that these weird contorted positions for hours on end. So we have pain that usually limits our career. For me personally, um, one, of the, one of the deciding factors for me to kind of stop doing clinical care, or at least dragged down drastically in the hours in which I was doing clinical care was I had a tremendous amount of pain associated with kind of what I was saying. Um, additionally, I had a motocross accident kind of like 18 years ago and my shoulder healed, my collarbone healed incorrectly, Bjorn. So it healed like this, which mean, which mean that it shortened that whole, mm -hmm. that whole yes. girdle, if you will. Yeah. Right. So all this to say is that I used to have a tremendous amount of pain, occupational pain from dentistry. Since using the catalyst, I don't have pain anymore. Now, granted, I'm not clinical anymore, but I still had a lot of lingering pain from dentistry, right? Just stuff that was just kind of, I don't know if they're adhesions or whatever you call, you can kind of get into this, but it has been a big change in my life, right? I am kind of pain-free at age 47, even though I thought I was going to be wrecked from doing dentistry for, tw for 20 years. So sorry for the, for the long intro and context, Bjorn. Uh, I want no, to welcome you the perfect. I mean... Context matters, and we we like your listeners need to uh, to understand like you know wh why we're doing this and like how this all fits together. I think this is perfect. Good, good. Well, um, so can you give a little bit about? I know you and I have had side conversation. Give a little bit about kind of what brought you to where you are. You are not a you are not a fitness guru from the get. You're a tech guy that then happened to, to turn into fitness. But yours was also the journey here was also you from an occupational standpoint as well. Like the fix was occupationally. Uh, you were plagued by occupational, what am I trying to say, Bjorn? You know, occupational uh, hazards, if you will. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. No, so um, I'm uh, now 45 years old. I'm German, born in Germany. And um, originally, I'm an economist by trade, uh, behavior at scale of people. So I have nothing to do with fitness originally, but what makes people tick, what make they do, and so on and so forth. Oh. And... Um, I was uh, in my job, um, like as Yekto said, I was in tech. So we were uh, originally um, part of a company that was kind of like the Zillow of Europe. 
And uh, we got acquired by Deutsche Telekom, um, which is like T-Mobile. You guys know T-Mobile here in the United States. It's a subsidiary mm -hmm. of Deutsche Telekom. And um, for that company, I was flying around the world uh, in the late 2000s and early 2010s and was sourcing new companies, startups whatsoever to integrate into our ecosystem. Um, so all the stuff that we didn't have as the elephant um, and you know, my job and my team's job was how to teach the elephant to dance with mice. So smaller companies and, you know, have them not crushed in the process, which very often happens. So during that time, I basically found myself on a plane every second day. So I had 150 to 160 flights a year sitting on a plane. Um, and for context, um, when I was uh, 20, um, I got diagnosed with a problem between my L4 and L5. So they're very tight and a little bit dislocated, um, a little bit of scoliosis down there and very narrow disc. And um, it was actually in flight school in the German Air Force where they said like, hey, you should, like, you should sit in a plane. So please stop doing what you're doing. So, um, so now, 15 years later, I find myself 150 days a year on a plane, <laughs> which again, they told me 15 years ago I shouldn't be doing. And um, what that led to, I was absolutely miserable. I was uh, 20 days a month. I was on painkillers, um, not opioids or whatsoever, but like I was literally like, I mean, it was Tic Tac where my, or, you know, I don't know, M&Ms were my Because of the back, back pain, pain, right? Because of the back right, pain? Yes, like yeah. lower back pain was absolutely killing me. I couldn't get out of bed uh, in the morning, uh, could hardly walk after like, eight hours on a plane, I couldn't get out of the seat. So it was just really, really bad. But then on top of it, you're sitting all the time. You're sitting in front of a computer, you're sitting in meetings, you're sitting in the car, you're sitting in the plane. It was all sitting. Mm -hmm. Horrible. So at one point in time, it was 2012, my physician is telling me, Bjorn, we're coming to a point where you either quit your job or you massively strengthen your core. Mm. Um, because the problem is your muscles around that area are too weak. So at night, they basically relax. And then, you know, your vertebrae fall into a position that they're not supposed to be. And so you, even if you're sitting, you're relaxing, and it all the weight is on the tendons, is on the disc, is, is on the vertebrae. Like, that's what it shouldn't be. You have to massively strengthen your core. And I said, Karsten, that was this his name. I said, Karsten... Uh, you know, I get up at four in the morning to be at six o'clock at the airport to like fly somewhere to have a day. And then I do this, this, and this. when am I supposed, how am I supposed to do this? Right. Am I going to mm -hmm. plank it an hour every day or what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. Um, he said, go down the road and uh, go to the studio uh, that I'm going to. Um, and you wear the suit and it like stimulates all the muscles, but also all the connective tissue, but also all these muscles that are very, very hard to reach, especially around your abs, your like erector spinae, like, you know, all these like muscles that you need to strengthen your lower back. And I, so him, I uh, go there twice a week and it's awesome and it absolutely is going to help you. And I was like, interesting, interesting. And then he said, and every session is just 20 minutes. I said, okay, now you lost me. Like now it's too good to be true, right? <laughs> you know, like literally now it's too good to be true. He said, no, 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 please go, please go. Um, so yeah, so I went, I just walked past like from his practice to my home it was downtown Berlin. Um, I could just walk and I walked past the studio. It was like super convenient looked through the window and there was a 30 year old male and a 60 year old female side by side um, with black suits, wires all over them and a personal trainer telling them what to do. And they had nothing in their hands and they were doing butterflies, mm -hmm. nothing in their hands and they were dripping. And I was like, sorry, first of all, this picture, all this whole picture makes no sense. Uh, why are they dripping? Is it a heated room or what is it? Like, I have no clue. And then what is the 60 year old women, woman doing that? Like, you know, what, what, I have never, like, when do you see a 60 year old female in a gym? Like, you don't, like, that's a very rare sight. Yeah. So I went inside, they explained everything to me. Long story short, I tried this. I was like three minutes, four minutes into the workout, I was dripping. And I was like, my whole body was on, like, literally, like, lit. And I was like, wow, I've never felt like this before. 20 minutes through, I was absolutely exhausted. I, felt this like endorphin rush that you have after like you, you really work out hard. Two nights later, I was so sore. I couldn't get off the, 
bathroom. Like, you know, I had a really hard time getting off the toilet uh, because I was literally so sore. And I was like, interesting. So I just spent 20 minutes standing, hardly moving in this suit, making very basic range of motion movements with no injury risk. And I'm sore as if I spent hours in the gym and went for a hike for six hours on top of this with a heavy backpack. And what, like, I just felt like absolutely unexpected uh, different. Um, gave it a try, became a member. And then every Monday at 6 p.m., I went to the studio because Monday was my non-travel day. So I mm -hmm. went out of the, came out of the office, travel day, um, non-travel day, sorry, uh, non-travel day, did this. And after six weeks, it was a Sunday morning. I woke up and I told my wife, I'm not in pain and I haven't taken a pill in a week. And I did six sessions of 20 minutes in this thing with a personal trainer back in the day. So mm -hmm. the technology wasn't where we have it today. Um, the devices were $25,000. You needed a personal trainer to play DJ on it. It wasn't smart. It wasn't intelligent. And you shared suit with other people. So there were a lot of aspects 10 years ago that we don't have anymore today. But 20 minutes in the suit, and I was pain-free. Very excited about it. Uh, a little bit later that year, just... My wife became a customer. Half my office became customers. Like I learned that at the time we had 500 studios offering nothing else than that in Germany already. Wow. Germany is about a quarter of the United States from a population perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2012, we had 500 studios. Today, there are 2,500 doing nothing Lord. else than this. It is absolutely insane. Which is crazy because it's very new tech for the U.S. I mean, I know there's some competition and it's coming on the scene for you or has been. I mean, they've been around the suits, but like yours is the first one that I ever saw that kind of, it looks really cool. It, like you said, doesn't have like zillion wires coming off of it. You have a cool iOS app that kind of walks you through the training protocol now. You know, I, I pop up my iPad and go through, mm, what's, what, what kind of training do I want to do today, right? Um, and then in 20 minutes, like you said, you're, you're, you're done, which 20 minutes doesn't feel like a long time. And then you're in it and you're like, holy shit, how am I sweating already? Like you're saying, how am I already sweating in five minutes into this? And then it's funny the next morning you wake up, it's like, all right, I feel pretty good. But this delayed onset muscle fatigue, right? It's a two day thing. And then you're, you're, you're right. It's like, all of a sudden it's like, I can't hardly move. I'm so sore. And you feel this incent, this sense of like, you know, I know we, we attribute soreness to like how hard we worked kind of thing, right? There's that correlation, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. however sore I am means I must've kicked ass in the gym. So to have that, like, just, just almost all of your body being sore, right. is just a very, it's a very gratifying feeling. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we I'd have people like, that tell us they really get addicted to it. Literally, yeah. there's an addiction almost. Yeah, my wife and I would do it. You know, we used to do it a, a lot together in sessions and just kind of, she'd be like, what number are you on? You know, like, how how are you doing it so high? You know, because it actually, it's on a scale, right? You're, you're working your way up. And and I know this is for people when they get the the uh, the suit, so to speak. But like, it, um, you know, it goes from zero to what, 400? Mm -hmm. 480. Yeah. Yeah. And so it kind of, we almost gamified it between ourselves. Like, why are you on, how are you on 200? I'm only on 100 and it's, you know, anyway, sidebar there, but it is, it was a fun thing to do or it is a fun thing to do with uh, your spouse kind of training. Um, and you can do it in the house real quick. Yeah, no, absolutely. Quick. I, no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, we, we took the te technology much further. So, so very quickly to finish this, this story, like, why am I doing this? So later that year, we were sitting with friends. Uh, my wife and I would, were in California for a summer trip. Um, and we were sitting with friends in, in Beverly Hills at a barbecue. And the girls were talking fitness. And the boys were talking. I can't remember what we we're talking about. But the girls were talking fitness. And my wife said, oh, we do this thing in the suit. Have you guys tried this? And so on and so forth. And everybody's looking at her like, what are you talking about? And I'm just overhearing this conversation. And I just, sorry. I'm, in sit I'm sitting in Beverly Hills. You don't have this? Like this for me was, so for context, um, if it comes to fitness uh, and beauty in Europe, we generally look to the United States for new mm -hmm. things. Like you've invented like uh, CrossFit and SoulCycle. And I mean, literally all the fitness trends are basically originating mostly in LA and some in New York, but that's also our perception. For context, mm -hmm. we're talking 2012. Peloton didn't exist yet. 
Okay. All right. Right. So just yeah. putting it into context, they only launched in 14. Um, so like they, they didn't really exist yet. And, and I was just sitting there and, and thought like, Hey, we have them on en- every corner for context. Germany has 280 or at the time, 280 Starbucks. And we had 500 EMS studios. Wow. Just, just from a, from a context yeah, perspective, yeah, yeah. it was okay. so prevalent right. already. And, and I was sitting there. This is, this is very, very interesting. Okay. Now my economist brain kicks in. I'm like, okay, so here's a thing that is, with a short amount of time, with a no amount of effort, with no injury risk, giving me very great results. So the input output Mm -hmm. function with this thing is so different from everything else that you can do to condition and and strengthen your body. That was like, okay, that's a step change. Like that's literally a step change. Because if you think about it, what we've done a lot in the past is we have optimized and, and put a lot of tech into fitness, but they do only do two things. They track, they tell you how you did, all the Apple Watches and Aura Rings and like all the apps. And so they tell you how you did and they motivate you to do something. They tell you what to do and they put a hot model in front of you and, and a mirror in the back of it and so on and so forth. Like, so that's all motivation pieces and tracking pieces, but we haven't changed the workout itself. We're still lifting weights and throwing them further and running longer and faster and rowing like in... You know, you know, old movies uh, and the Greek, basically like the Olympic games are still the same thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay. still the same. So once of a sudden we have now technology that helps us directly induce the reaction to the tissue, in this case, the muscle that we want with all without all the negatives around it. So it's literally um it's breaking down the fibers, it's strengthening, it's, we can exactly in, in our suit, we can exactly say what do we want to trigger fast twitch muscle fibers for speed development, for power development, for erection, slow twitch muscle fibers for general strength, endurance of the muscle. We can have a cardiovascular load that's just inducing a twitch and, you know, burning ATP and, and glycogen and so on and so forth so that your cardiovascular system has to work harder, although you're just walking. Uh, we have uh, customers that are, for example, in not in shape mm-hmm. and they can't run, but we make them walk on a treadmill and they induce like additional load. So now their uh-huh. heart rate goes to a level that they otherwise can't do. So in my case, I was now out of, um, out of pain because my lower back got massively stronger. My abs got massively stronger. Um, your pelvic floor gets stronger. Like, you know, all these areas get like, you know, strengthened because it literally leaves no muscle behind. Uh, because it's like this full body experience. Um, but also what I had is I had a lot of headaches and I had the headaches from, you know, tenseness around my, you know, trapezius and, you know, those areas. And because it's such a intense muscle work that the muscle has to conduct in this 20 minutes, I always like compare this to, if you go to the gym and you do biceps curls, if you would go to the gym, do a biceps curl, you do like 12 reps, right arm, 12 reps, left arm. Okay, but for the right arm, you do 12 reps. Let's say every rep is a second and you do three sets. Now you spend 36 seconds with time under tension on your biceps. Right. One, two. So now you go to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. But at the end of the day, your biceps has done 36 seconds of work. I see. Yes. Okay. So the time right. under tension, you hear that a lot these days. That seems to be like the, the new thing that all the trainers it is the new thing, right? time under tension. Okay. Right. So 36 seconds. There so you 36 go. Okay. okay. So when you do your strength or power workout, it's 20 minutes long and every four seconds you're mm-hmm. flexing and every four seconds you're relaxing. It's pretty much, it's exactly 50% of the time. Okay, fifty yes. percent of the time of twenty. Like, I your can biceps attest is to that. Yes. Ten minutes. Time under tension is ten minutes, right? Your bicep is time under tension ten minutes. So if, if that is the metric, that's why you, we have this delayed onset fatigue, soreness that you're like, holy cow. Yes, right? it's like it's one of the aspects why we can put because people say like we have also this seven minute apps and like we have all these things because we know people don't have time, so they're trying like people are trying to like with other traditional yeah. workouts trying to push a lot of a small thing. With us, it's just a function of the technology. We don't want you to work out much longer than half an hour. We literally don't want to because we are already putting a lot of muscle work into that short amount of time. 
So people who tell us, oh, I combine three of them. I said, don't. It's not yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More is not better, right? right. There's no, the, more is not better. So I had all this tension around my um, my trapezius and that therefore like, you know, it came into my head and I had headaches around this because again, I'm also very tall. I'm like 6'4". I'm relatively tall. Okay. And then you always like hunch forward with other people yeah. when you're talking. It's like there are all these aspects and you sit on computers. So now when I come out of a catalyst workout, we have um, specific it's upper back as a, as a muscle group. We have specific pads around here. The muscle is actually exhausted and it relaxes. So now you don't have this constant tension anymore. So first of all, the muscle gets into, okay, a relaxed state. So you can, the muscle can relax, but also it gets stronger. So it doesn't have to operate at the edge of its capacity. So you have a much more, um, uh. you have a much more capable body. And therefore you don't get into this, into these edge cases where then pain comes in because pain is basically the feedback mechanism of the body telling you, you shouldn't be doing this. Like that's, yes. that's, that's literally yes. it. And uh, yeah. So this is how I found this, uh, how it fixed myself, found out it didn't exist in the United States. Um, the reason for that very quickly is the United States treats powered muscle stimulators as a medical device. Um, where in the rest of the world, it's the same as an electric toothbrush or a blow dryer or something like that. Um, and that is because in the 80s and 90s in America, when these app belts came out, the marketeers went a little bit overboard and said, like, you get rock hard apps from a battery of this size, which obviously does not work. So the FDA started, hey, we're going to regulate the claims that you can make. But what that did is it created a very high entry barrier for the small companies in Europe who created these amazing machines and sold them all over the world and they couldn't enter the United States. Is STEM the same thing as just EMS technology? Is it, you know, when you, when someone says like, I used to go to a chiropractor, right? Because mm -hmm. I have all this pain and they're like, we're going to put you on the STEM device. And it was kind of the same feeling, but it was, it was pulsing like, right. Or when someone has yes. a knee injury. So is STEM the same as EMS? Is it stimulation so, through electro? So they're like all, it's a family of therapies, I would say. So okay. it's a family of therapies. They're all using um, impulses, okay. but the characteristics of the impulses basically define what physiological reaction you have. So for example, with um, certain frequencies and certain, so you have the amplitude of a pulse, you have the form, the waveform of the pulse, you have the length mm -hmm. of the pulse, and then you have, is it just a positive or is it a positive and a negative? So is it monopolar, is it bipolar? Um, and depending on like how you form these impulses, you have a neurological reaction. Okay. So, so what you in, in pain theory generally do is you just, trigger the nerve and what you want to do is you want to basically deplete the nerve so that it has no uh, capacity of basic signaling anymore for a certain amount of time which makes the pain go away um, what we are doing is we are forming the uh, that's that's stim or um tens like tens is generally in the area of transcutane okay. uh, transcutaneous um, nerve stimulation so this is what they're trying to do it's pain therapy i see okay right so what we are doing is we are specifically modulating what we're sending to um, trigger motor neurons to then have a muscle contraction and muscle reaction and depending how fast we trigger them is the question of are we building just small twitches which we do, for example, in cardio, because in cardio, you're still walking. We don't want full contractions because if you have a full tetanus and you have full contractions, then you, you, you don't have fine motorics anymore. You can't run with that, right? That's just, you're just, yeah. you're, you're rigid, work. right? You're locked up, you're rigid, yes. right? You're locked up. Um, so, so in, for example, in cardiovascular mode, we just have these small twitches. Also in relaxation mode, we just have small twitches because what we want is just a pumping, uh, a pumping reaction of the muscle because we just want to get the blood flow going and and that's you know just relax the muscle i want to loop this back to kind of because i want you to explain it and obviously you are a, a a muscle expert at this point in time i know you started as a tech guy you don't have a medical background but at this point in time being the ceo of a large ems company now you have uh you've gotten that education so you know how you hear the term, and, and I don't know the medical term for it, but let's say you're getting a massage and you're saying, hey, all these adhesions have set up in the muscle, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. and I know that, that that is kind of notorious in dentistry, right, from the from the 
uh, what am I trying to say? The sustained improper form of like, let's say holding your arms up, like holding a handpiece or our drills, right? Long periods of time, you get all these adhesions in your back. And I don't know what the, the word for that is. Is there something, and I noticed that you, by using the catalyst, it feels like it resets everything. Meaning that like, it kind of, it kind of like reboots your muscle computer. And I know I'm using not very, very medical terms, but it just felt like I, I felt anew again versus like having all these like clunky adhesions and my gait was wrong and my, my posture was wrong. It kind of reset, it resets your musculature frame. Is there anything to that? Yes. Um, okay. there's, there's, yeah, there are multiple aspects to this. So when, when you talk about adhesions, um, I think what you mean is like, so the fascia basically, so you have the muscle and you have mm -hmm. connected tissue around it. And what you actually want is for the muscle to move freely, you oh, basically fascia. want the yes. muscle to basically move freely. Right. Right. So, but it's, it's getting, for example, stuck. In a but our adhesions amount, right? are designed to, pardon me, the adhesions are designed to help your body be more efficient. It's saying, hey, I realize that you're putting your arm up in the air for four hours at a time. Let's make this process, let's adapt to this process so that you, that the muscle is not contracting the whole time. Let's adhere the fascia to the muscle. Is that what it is? Exactly. Yes. I see. Okay. Right. So, so basically what it does is it limits your range of motion. Right. It's almost like saying, hey, I don't want to hold this. Like I put a fixture here, like something like this. It's almost, mm -hmm. you know, instead of your, your muscle constantly work, it kind of like gets stuck in this in this position. Um, and you don't want the full the full range of you, you basically lose some of the range of motion. OK. OK. But that also means like your muscle stays tense in that area. So like some of the muscle fibers are in a constant contract, constantly contract state, so to say. So you're losing range of motion. And this is when you have, um, for example, mm, when you have an injury, the massage therapist is telling you, oh, you're very tight. Yes. Right. So you're very tight. What's happening when you're very tight is the muscle is trying to protect itself. So for example, if I have, um, I got a hamstring injury when I did a Spartan race three years ago, I had, like, it was cold. It was all great. It was like last quarter of the race. And we had to wait 15 minutes in front of an ob obstacle because there was a, a line. <laughs> there was a line, right? So cooled down. And there was a sprint and like getting off one of these like slope ramps. And I ran one, two, three, four. And it was an audible bang like that my right hamstring like had basically one of the fiber yeah. um, bundles was just. And people around like looked at me and I, I literally ruptured um, part of my hamstring afterwards what the muscle is doing the rest of the muscle is you know contracting because it wants to keep this injured piece together it doesn't want to expose it to stress so now what you have you have basically muscles that are overworked and that are like tightening up and tensing up because they are afraid of like getting lengthened they're afraid of getting in, into a more painful state so your body is trying to protect itself so this is why you're limping so, for example, you're limping because you know, for example, in your hip, if you have a hip issue, um, you know, if you're extending beyond a certain angle, you get into pain. So now your body basically says, OK, no further than this. And you're starting to limp. So you're losing range of motion and, and all of that. Mm. So what we are now doing with with um, EMS technology is we are, first of all, training every muscle we literally we uh, of course we don't have any on your head and we don't have anything in your hand and so on but the main muscle groups we're all working them out so we're strengthening them so during your normal even a normal position i'm in much better shape than i was 10 years ago like i can do things that i was not able to do 10 years ago like for sure and i'm, I'm now i'm 45 and in better shape than i was at 35 because you basically strengthen all the muscles, but also the connective muscles, like the smaller ones that you wouldn't really activate. And in that state, that case, they don't have to go into the state where they are operating at their limit. You get more endurance there, but also they're not afraid of getting into this pain. So you're losing these, these tenseness and these limitations of range of motion. And now what comes then as a follow-up, if you limit your range of motion, now all your... Um, your joints are also limited in range of motion. And if you uh, then I go see. to the chiropractor, like he has just a ton of work to do. So basically um, it's, it's all this chain of things that are happening. And the fascia is like, you know, uh, tight and 
So what we now basically do is we have the mixture of exhaustion and strengthening of the muscle tissue. And I, I like your, your way to describe it as a reset. Um, that's, that's really what we're seeing. Yeah. And it's just so important that, you know, I think again, kind of to loop it full circle, it's just important because I see dental careers all the time around me being shortened, myself included, because of the pain of the occupation, right? And you wouldn't think, you know, like my friends who are non-dentists think like, oh, it's pretty easy. You just sit in a chair all day, but it's these weird contorted positions and you see mm -hmm. it. I mean, you understand, right? Because you're in this field, but like many, many dentists I know are in a lot of pain on a daily basis. And it's, and it's, 90% of the time, muscle pain, right? There's, there's extenuating circumstances like obviously scoliosis or things like that that you can't, it, it's not going to be fixed by this. But it's no. usually this repetitive, poor ergonomic position over time. Um, a lot of back issues that is because of the hunching over, you know, eight hours a day and, and, and contracted. And then just being, like I said, arms in the air and contorted and upside down and looking in someone's mouth. Um, so, you know, I wanted to bring this to the masses because it, look, if it can extend your career even, you know, a couple years, like it's the greatest thing. It's the greatest podcast you've ever learned, listened to, right. In being introduced to this technology will, will save, you know, just anyway. So if it adds years to your career, right. Um, no, similar. Addition, so like, it's interesting. Like, so, so here's, here's one of the, this is why I was so excited to, to talk to you, uh, today. And like when you first reached out to me, uh, telling me what this did to you, I was absolutely excited because that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing um, unforeseen benefits mm -hmm. um, that are very unique to specific occupations. Um, so if it's if it's a golf player who now can like fix his frozen shoulder, which we have quite a few, and you know what tell us this, but then also these very specific ones where you're saying like, hey, because we take care of our customer, and the customer gets the most, or the patient gets the most. Uh, comfortable position so we have to get the one one less than that um it it uh, it makes a ton a ton of sense and uh and this is why we are like the whole team is always so excited to hear these very specific stories what it can do to to individual customer groups um and we're also learning more and more about this so for example uh, we're starting to specifically built workouts for specific use cases so for example we now have acl prevention workouts or so on and so forth of course we always had like upper back and lower back and shoulder and mobility though know, oh, those wow, were the yeah. first ones we really mm -hmm. we really had but hearing from you that it's a very specific uh case is is absolutely fascinating yeah. And obviously, you know, most, most people, we, we start working out in our beginning of our lives for, you know, it's not for a functional standpoint, it's for, because we want to be look ripped and have six pack abs and all those things, right? That's where you attribute fitness. But I think as you, as you get wiser and more mature in your age, you do it from a functional standpoint, right? For trying to prevent injury, trying to stay flexible, trying to stay limber and abating the, abating the, the effects of aging, right? Without, without, with being sedentary. A hundred percent. Six. Yes. So, more than half of our customers are 45 plus. Yes. Yes. Plus. Yeah. So what we see is for the younger crowd that you were describing um, earlier, like that want to look ribbed and like, you know, aesthetics perspective, they have 25,000 other options. Like they like they can do everything. Right. But once we um, progress in our careers and get older. We have time restrictions. We have ability restrictions. We have previous injuries. We have um, risk of injury because also, I mean, our bodies weren't made to become 80 years old um, <laughs> originally. Like, I would say evolution hasn't caught up with our quality of life improvements. Uh, so, for a lot of our customers, we're the only option they have. It's the first mm -hmm. workout they've been doing in 20 years, literally. Um, yeah, and it is daunting to get back off the sidelines. I, I like, I, I, I think this is important, right? Sometimes once you stop working out, it's almost, it's really hard to get back kind of into fitness again, right? Once you kind of lose it a little bit, it's really almost demoralizing. And it's like, oh, I can't forget it. You know, I'm old now. And, um, and I think this is a great, great segue to saying, hey, put this suit on, enjoy the tech. 20 minutes, you're done. And, and now you're on your way, right? I don't think it's a, a complete, obviously you still need to do some cardio and you still maybe do weight training. Um, I'm guessing, or, or maybe you're advocating this can be all inclusive. No, okay. no, no. no. So, so very quickly to that, 
Uh, for us, we see two behaviors within our audience. We see the people who are already very active and fit. Mm -hmm. They add this once or twice a week to their regimen. And then we see the ones who totally have no alternative or have no time or had injuries. They do this two plus or two times plus um, per week. Okay. And for some of them, it's the only thing they do. And for others, it is an add-on that just gives them an extra edge or in days when I don't have, on days when I don't have time, I just do this for 20 minutes, like half an hour all in, like, you know, with getting ready, getting to the shower, half an hour all in, uh, in the morning and I'm ready to go. So we see both behaviors. Um, it's one tool in the toolkit. And for some people it's like, they only have a car and some only have a bike and some have a bike right. and a car. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's how we look at this. Yeah. And it's option. It's optionality. Right. And, and I think for this speaks to the people getting off of the sideline saying, I'm too busy. I don't have time for working out my body's in pain. I'm older now. Right. Like flip that on its head. And I think that's why, again, that's why I brought it to bring it to the masses. Um, I see here, I've got the, and additionally, you look really cool in the suit, by the way. You look, I, I, I say that I told this to my wife. I don't, I, say, I don't, there's no picture of me in the suit, by the way. Women Thank look, you. women look hot in this suit. Yeah. And men look, men look badass in this suit. Uh, yeah. So, we call it like people say it's a superhero suit. It really like is. You feel yeah. that way. It real that way. Um, I see that there's a wait list, um, still going on. Obviously the technology has, has caught on and, um, or I should say the wave has caught on in the U S and you have a wait. How far out are you with, with suit delivery right now? Bjorn? So we, we are catching up. Um, we, we were first overwhelmed by the re responses and mm -hmm. uh, because, and we have not really marketed this product yet and we haven't really gone out. Uh, you don't see press releases yet. I mean, they're going to come now, um, but over the last year, we haven't. So um, at one point in time, you know, I think we're now at like 55,000 people wait list that we currently have. Um, mm -hmm. The challenge is, first, we had production capacity challenge due to COVID. Currently, we can't buy enough chips. Uh, so we, we have to throttle that a little bit. Um, we hope to keep up, you know, catch up soon. But what we're doing is we uh, we work with specific partners and, and audiences. People can, um, you know, do something that you're probably going to tell us about. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give a, I'm going to give a website that'll push all my people to the front of the line for Bjorn. So you can we'll just tell them that even if it's not yeah. true, let's just say that. But the the suit is is an investment in itself, right? It's not you know, and it, and it's super high quality. I got to say, I was really impressed. I am a fan of packaging and the presentation you're in like that's kind of what i do in my dental practices it's all about the experience mm -hmm. and it was a i remember when i got my i got my suit it was like christmas and i opened it and it was this beautiful presentation with with a letter and this paper and it was just like a different experience it wasn't like oh here's your suit put it on and go it was a curated suit for me that i sent in my measurements you know and and when i bought it i will say that i was like man that's, this is this seems like a lot for a, for just a suit but then when I received it, I was like, oh, yeah, it has value, right? The presentation of it, the, the, the customization of it, because it runs about, I see on your website, about $2,385 is the price of uh, $2,385 for the price of the suit. Um, but I can just tell you that I've gotten so much value from it. A, you, you have the built-in app that now you have your trainer at home. But it's a this super high-quality suit. that's it, It's built to last for years, for sure. You can just tell. You can just tell. So oh, an investment, yes, but um, but nothing is more important than your health. And and like alluding back to like if this saved you even a year in your career, so to speak, like dentists can make back that that two thousand dollars in a day, right? I mean, it's totally it's, yes, you know. So it's not it's not even um, it's a, it's yeah, it's a nothing. But it's a it's it's peanuts compared to the big picture of what we're talking about. And uh, I uh, a friend of mine had a very interesting way to to put it and he said like so you can affirm that someone was he told one of his friends about the suit and it's like how much is it it's like two and a half thousand dollars and he's like wow that's a lot so you can affirm it for like 66 bucks a month mm -hmm. well that's still a lot and he said how much <laughs> did you spend on wine this month yeah. <laughs> and and he was like uh, so let's say if you have like three glasses of a week, we know what wine is. How much expense? 
this is a multiple of that. Like, you know, yes. and he said, yeah. and you have no, you have no, it's just wine. We're not talking like other things on top of it. It's just, he said, he just asked, how much did you spend on wine this month? And I think we have in the past looked at a lot of fitness equipment, like the gym membership is $200 or it's a hundred dollars or whatsoever. If you don't at use least. it, yes, that's a lot of money because it doesn't generate any value. But once you get value out of it, it's just absolutely not a discussion. Right. Yeah. So the monthly thing breaks it down. I'm just saying, I, everyone, look, go to, and I'm going to put some, uh, go, go to catalyst.fit forward slash BP. That is the, that is the page for, for Bulletproof. Um, and uh, I'll put that in the notes and we'll put it maybe on this video. But go check it out. Like watch some of the videos. Because I remember when I, I didn't really fully understand when I was exposed to it from Ben Greenfield. I was like, what is this? And I kind of clicked on it and I was like, this looks badass. But just watching the videos and then digging into even your FAQs and, and learning about it. Because um, like you said, it almost seems too good to be true. And then you dig into the science of it and you're like, hmm. And then you actually receive it and do it, and and your body tells you that that was legit, right? The two day, the delayed muscle onset soreness or whatever it's called, DOMS. Like, is it DOMS? Delayed soreness? onset muscle soreness. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I was right. Um, it tells you that you did you did work two days two days before that, right? You did a lot of muscle work. So anyway, Bjorn, I, I think it's super cool tech. I think it's I'm I'm really glad to kind of expose hopefully some of my of my. Uh, colleagues to this technology because i think it will really um it could help a lot of people in my industry for sure so thank you for spending the time today with me and um it's good to it's good to, good to see you again thank you yeah and and as we said um so with your link uh your customers or your friends and um listeners have an opportunity to you know jump the line uh because we strategically deliver it to individuals that then help other individuals so yeah um that's uh that's good. And if more questions come up, let me know if your um, listeners have questions, uh, forward them to us and, you know, we can, we can go through them one by one. Awesome. All right, Bjorn. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time, buddy. And uh, yeah, be good. Absolutely. Good seeing you. Take care. Yeah, thank you.